Aleluya. 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 May God richly bless you. Bwana awabariki kwa wingi. You know it's not an easy thing. Najua si jambo jepesi. To come through all the way from Friday up to the end of the service today. Kuanzia Jumaa mpaka mwisho wa ibada ya leo. Because Satan has been fighting his way kwa sababu this service. Njia ame shetani amepigana njia yote kuzuia ibada hii. But now through the grace of God Sasa kupitia neema ya Mungu I can see that every one of us has prevailed. Na uzanikaona kila mmoja wetu ameshinda. For the Bible says na, he that endures unto the end the same shall be saved. Na Biblia inasema yeye atakayevumilia mpaka mwisho huyo ataokolewa. So now coming to the conclusion of the meetings Sasa tukija katika kumalizia kwa mikutano we expect at the end people to get what belongs to them tunategemea mwishoni watu watapata kile ambacho ni cha kwao because god comes at the last minute kwa sababu mungu huja dakika za mwisho to bless his own people kubariki watu wake so be among the people to receive a blessing Ku, today kuwa kati ya wale watu watakopokea baraka leo and i declare that blessing in jesus christ my name nami natangaza hiyo baraka katika jina la bwana yesu kristo lenye nguvu hallelujah hallelujah we can clap for ourselves tunaweza tukajipigie wengi makofi god bless us mightly mungu atubariki kwa nguvu for coming to the end of this this service kwa, kwa kufikia katika mwisho wa ibada hii i believe wherever we go naamini kokote tutuendako we shall go with the blessings of the lord tutakwenda kwa na baraka za mungu amen amen shall we read let's read the word of god hebu tusome neno la mungu without wasting much of our time bila kupoteza muda wetu mwingi Matthew chapter 8 Matayo sura ya 8 from this 5 kuanzia mstari wa 5 and I will read also Colossians natasema Korinto chapter 1 from this 13 uh, wa Korinto sura ya kwanza Colossians wa Colossae sura ya kwanza and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum na hata Yesu alipoingia Capernaum there came unto him a centurion akamjia akida mmoja beseeching him akamsihi and saying lord my servant life at home sick akasema bwana mtumishi wangu amelala nyumbani mgonjwa of the paus grievously tormented wa kupoza anaumwa sana and jesus said unto him na Yesu akamwambia I will come and heal him. Nitakuja nimponye. The centurion answered and said, yule, Lord, yule akida akamjibu akase, akasema Bwana, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Sa, mimi sistahili wewe uingie chini ya dari yangu. But speak the word Lak- only. Lakini sema neno tu and my servant shall be healed. Na mtumishi wangu atapona. For I am a man under authority. Maana mimi ni kwa maana mimi nami ni mtu aliyewekwa chini ya mamlaka. Having soldiers under me. Ni mwenye askari chini yangu. And I say to this man go Nikim, and he go. Nikimwambia huyu nenda huenda. And to another come and he cometh. Na huyu njo huja. And to my servant na kwa mtume wangu do this and he does it. Fanya hivi hufanya. When Jesus heard it, Yesu aliposikia hayo, he marveled and said to them that followed him. Akawaambia wale waliomfuata, Verily I say unto you, Amini nawaambieni, I have not found so great faith not no no not in Israel. Sijaona imani kubwa namna hii kwa yeyote katika Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and na, west. Nami nawaambieni ya kwamba wengi watakuja kutoka mashariki na magharibi and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Na wataketi pamoja na Ibrahim na Isaka na Yakobo katika ufalme wa mbinguni. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. 
bali wana ufalme watatupwa katika giza la nje there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth ndiko kutakuwako kilio na kusaga meno and jesus said unto the centurion na yesu akamwambia yule akida go thy way nenda zako and as thou hast believed na iwe kwako kama ulivyoamini so be it done unto thee iwe kwako kama ulivyoamini and this servant was healed in the self same hour mtumishi wake akapona saa ile ile we go to colossians chapter 1 twende katika wa kolosai sura ya kwanza from this 15 kutoka katika mstari wa 15 we start from 13 taanza 13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption colossians chapter 1 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every cre- every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence naye alituokoa katika nguvu za giza na kutuhami na kutuhamisha na kutuingiza katika ufalme wa mwana wa pendo lake ambaye katika yeye tuna ukombozi yaani msamaha wa dhambi naye ni mfano wa Mungu asioonekana mzaliwa wa kwanza wa viumbe vyote kwa kuwa katika yeye vitu vyote viliumbwa vya mbinguni na vilivyo juu ya nchi vinavyoonekana na visivyoonekana ikiwa ni vitu vya enzi au usultan au enzi au mamlaka vitu vyote viliumbwa kwa njia yake na kwa ajili yake naye amekuwako kabla ya vitu vyote na vitu vyote ushikana katika yeye naye ndiye kichwa cha mwili yani kanisa naye ni mwanzo na, ni mzaliwa wa kwanza katika wafu ili kwamba awe mtangulizi katika yote may god add this blessing to the reading of the word bwana aongeze baraka kwa kusoma kwa neno lake tunaweza kuketi haleluya haleluya We thank God for this day. Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya siku hii. Messages has been preached starting from Friday. Jumbe zimehubiriwa kwa kuanzia Ijumaa. And those messages we thank God were messages of repentance and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Na tunamshukuru Mungu hizo jumbe zilikuwa ni jumbe za toba na ubatizo wa Roho Mtakatifu. And God has blessed his own people. Na Mungu amebariki watu wake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So where God has gathered his own people. Kwa hiyo mahali Mungu amekusanya watu wake. Because God has to show himself in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Kwa sababu Mungu yapaswa aonekane mwenyewe katika nguvu na madhihirisho ya Roho Mtakatifu. We are going to look at the message here. Tunakwenda kutazama ujumbe hapa. The Roman centurion. Yule akida wa Kirumi. What God did to this Roman centurion. Kile Mungu alimfanyia huyu akida wa Kirumi. But we have read the scripture in Colossians. Lakini tumesoma maandiko katika Wakolosai. Now the book of Colossians. Sasa kitabu cha Wakolosai is telling us that kinatuambia kwamba who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Yeye aliyetuokoa kutoka katika nguvu za giza. So there is darkness and light. Kwa kuna nuru na giza. So these are the two powers. Hizi ni nguvu mbili. And these are the two kingdom. Na hizi ni falme mbili. You cannot belong to both of them. Huwezi kuwa wazote. If you are in the kingdom of light it means you are not in the kingdom of darkness. Kama uko katika ufalme wa nuru inamaanisha upo katika ufalme wa giza. If you are in the kingdom of darkness then you are not in the kingdom of light. Na kama uko katika ufalme wa giza inamaanisha huko katika ufalme wa nuru. If we have light 
kama sisi tunanuru it does not mean darkness is done away haimaanishi kwamba giza halipo we are just we have just chosen to live in the light tumechagua tu kuishi kwenye nuru that is the atmosphere we have chosen hiyo ni hali ya hewa tuliyochagua otherwise darkness is still there waiting vinginevyo bado giza liko pale likisubiri if you are in a house kama uko katika nyumba you can either choose to live in darkness or to live in the light unaweza kaamua kuishi katika nuru au kuishi katika giza when you switch on the light unapowasha then darkness nuru, disappears ndipo ile giza inaondoka you have chosen to live in that atmosphere of light umeamua kuishi kwenye hayo mazingira ya nuru you can still change and channel to darkness unaweza ukabadilisha uka na kuunga tena kwenye giza kwa. when you switch off the light unapozima ile taa then immediately darkness will come in ndipo mara tu giza linaingia ndani hallelujah hallelujah so the, the bible is saying kwa biblia inasema He who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Yeye ametukomboa kutoka katika nguvu za giza. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Na ametugeuza kutuingiza katika ufalme wa mwana wake mpendwa. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Ndani yake tuna ukombozi kupitia damu yake. Even the forgiveness of sin. Hata msamaha wa dhambi hallelujah hallelujah so we are redeemed by the blood kwa tunakombolewa kwa damu there are so many blood in this world kuna damu nyingi ulimwenguni hapa but this blood cannot redeem anybody lakini hizi damu hazizi kumkomboa yeyote in the in the old testament they used the blood of a lamb katika agano la kale walitumia damu ya mwanakondoo the blood of goats na damu ya mbuzi and that blood was only covering on the sins na hiyo damu ilikuwa inafunika tu dhambi it could not take away the sins haikuweza kuondoa dhambi because that was the blood of an animal kwa sababu ilikuwa ni damu ya mnyama and an animal has no soul na mnyama hana nafsi so it needed someone who has a soul kwa ilihitaji mtu fulani aliye na nafsi and this is a spotless lamb na huyu ni mwana kondoo asiye na doa. Who is Jesus Christ our Savior? Ambaye Yesu Kristo mwokozi wetu. We are forgiven through his blood. Tunasamehewa kupitia damu dam yake. Why? Kwa nini? Because sin entered the world through blood. Kwa sababu da, dhambi iliingia ulimwenguni kupitia damu. We know the world is deceived. Tunajua ulimwengu umedanganyika. They think sin entered through eating an apple. Wanadhani kwamba dhambi iliingia kwa kupitia kula tofaa. Then Cain was going to be accepted. Ndipo kama ingekuwa hivyo Cain angekubalika. Because what Cain offered had no blood. Kwa sababu kile ambacho Cain alitoa hakikuwa na damu. But what Abel offered had blood in it. La, lakini kile ambacho Abeli alitoa kilikuwa pona damu ndani yake. Abel a revelation. Abel alikuwa na ufunuo. He knew he had a revelation you now seen entered the world. Alikuwa na ufunuo jinsi gani dhambi iliingia duniani. Because when man sinned. Kwa sababu wakati mwanadamu amefanya dhambi The first person to kill an animal was God himself. Mtu wa kwanza kuua mnyama ni Mungu mwenyewe. Because when man sin ran away into darkness. Kwa sababu mwanadamu alipofanya dhambi alikimbilia giza. He covered himself with fig leaves. Akajifunga mwenyewe kwa majani. Because God used to visit them every day. Kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa akiwatembelea kila siku. In the cool of the day like this time. Wakati wa jioni kama wakati huu. God came moving in the garden of Eden. Mungu alikuja akitembea katika bustani ya Eden. So when they sinned. Kwa hiyo walipofanya dhambi that god will come wakajua kwamba mungu atakuja hallelujah hallelujah when god created the man wakati mungu amemuumba mtu he knew that a man will sin alijua kwamba mwanadamu atafanya dhambi god knew everything mungu akajua kila kitu before he created him kabla hajamuumba if we can go back kama tungeweza kurudi that's why we love this man william branham ndio maana tunampenda huyu mtu william branham william branham had a great revelation william branham alikuwa na ufunuo mkuu surpassing all the apostles ukiwavuka mitume wote no wonder paul said ndio sio ajabu paulo alisema we only know in part tunajua tu kwa sehemu and we only prophesy 
Matai in part. Na tuna kwa sehemu. When that which is perfect shall come. Lakini ile iliyo kamili ijapo. Then this which we have shall be done away. Na hii tuliyonayo itaondoka. Now that which is perfect has come. Sasa ile kamili imekuja. And it came with this man here. Na ilikuja na huyu mtu hapa. If you follow this man correctly. Kama ukimfuata huyu mtu sahihi. He never just went to Genesis alone. Haku Yes. He never just went to Genesis alone. Haku subiri tu. Hakwenda tu kule mwanzo tu bas. Because Genesis is the beginning of the earth. Kwa sababu mwanzo ni mwanzo wa dunia. But it's not the beginning of God. Lakini si mwanzo wa Mungu. God has been there before Genesis. Mungu alikuwaepo kabla ya ule mwanzo. So that's why I said in Malachi. Ndio maana nilisema kule katika Malaki, Malachi had the revelation up to Genesis. Malaki alikuwa na ufunuo mpaka mwanzo. But William Branham had the revelation even before Genesis. Lakini William Branham alikuwa na ufunuo hata kabla ya mwanzo. William Branham had the revelation to go back to the mind of God. William Branham alikuwa na ufunuo kwenda nyuma ya nia ya Mungu. Look at these seven messengers. Tazama hawa jumbe saba. We have Paul tunaye Paulo. Who was the first messenger to the Ephesus? Ambaye alikuwa ni mjumbe wa kwanza wa kanisa la Efeso. And Paul had a pillar of fire. Na Paulo alikuwa na nguzo ya moto. Then these other messengers who followed here. Eh? Ndipo hawa jumbe wengine waliofuata. These were reformers. Hao walikuwa watengenezaji. These were preachers like us. Hao walikuwa hudumu kama sisi. Because Paul was the alpha there. Kwa sababu Paulo alikuwa ni mwa, wa kwanza pale. Paul laid the foundation. Paulo akaweka msingi. Then William Branham came to restore the already laid foundation. Ndipo William Branham akaja kurejesha msingi uliokuwa ume weko tayari. That's why the revelation which Paul had. Ndio maana ule ufunuo ambao Paulo alikuwa nao. When you read Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3 to 5. Unaposoma Efeso 1:3 mpaka 5. Paul had a bit of revelation to go back to before in the beginning. Paulo alikuwa na ufunuo kidogo wa kurudi kabla ya mwanzo. He can tell the believers who they were before the world began. Aliweza kuambia waamini walikuwa kina nani kabla ulimwengu hujaanza. And when you look at Apostle Paul. Na unapomtazama Mtume Paulo. He could also go back to Genesis. Angeweza kurudi kule mwanzo. And see certain things which happened there. Na kuona mambo fulani aliyofanyika kule. Moses the prophet. Ak- Musa nabii. He never mentioned the name of the people who impersonated him at Pharaoh. Hakum akuataja majina wale watu waliomuigiza wakati wa Farao. You can read when those people impersonated Moses. Unaweza ukasoma mahali ambapo wale watu walimuigiza walimuigiza Musa. Moses had a staff. Musa alikuwa na fimbo. When he casted it down, alipoitupa chini, it became a serpent. Ikawa nyoka. They were two magicians. Walikuwaepo wa, wa chai wawili. They also imitated Moses. Walimuigiza Musa. And their staff became a serpent. Also. Na fimbo zao zikawa nyoka. But we are not told their names in Genesis. Lakini hatukuambiwa majina yao kule mwanzo. It took Paul to mention their names. Ili mwitaji Paulo kutaja majina yao. He said just like Janis and Jambrins impersonated Moses. Akasema kama Yana na Yambre walivyomuigiza Musa. Meaning Paul had a revelation to go back to the beginning. Hiyo inamaanisha Paulo alikuwa na ufunuo kurudi kule mwanzo. Because his message came with a pillar of fire. Kwa sababu jumbe wake ulikuja na nguzo ya moto. As well as in the days of the restoration. Ndivyo hivyo katika nyakati za urejesho. There comes the last messenger. Hapa yuaja mjumbe wa mwisho. That was William Branham. Huyo alikuwa William Branham. He had a greater revelation. Alikuwa na ufunuo mkuu. Because he had the spirit of Moses. Kwa sababu alikuwa na roho ya Musa. He also had the spirit of Elijah. Pia alikuwa na roho ya Elia. And above all, na juu ya yote. He had the spirit of Jesus. Alikuwa na roho ya Kristo Yesu. He said in the thoughts and intents of the heart. Akitambua mawazo na makusudi ya moyo. William Branham could tell you where you come from. William Branham angeweza kuambia unatoka wapi? And the problem which you are suffering. Na shida unaopata. That was the ministry of Jesus in William. Hiyo ilikuwa ni 
mitume ya Yesu Kristo ndani ya William Branham because he was sent to the gentile dispensation kwa sababu alitumwa katika kipindi cha mataifa so now the prophet is telling us sasa nabii anatuambia what happened in the beginning kile kilichotendeka kule mwanzo is saying let's take a trip with me in the beginning nikusema hebu tufanye safari na mimi twende mpaka mwanzo he wants we want to explain who is this Jesus tunataka tueleze huyu Yesu ni nani for the scripture says kwa sababu maandiko yanasema he is the image of the invisible god yeye ndiye sura ya Mungu asiyeonekana the first born of every creation you mzaliwa wa kwanza wa kila kiumbe how is he the image of the invisible god yeye anawezaje kuwa sura ya Mungu asiyeonekana for the bible says biblia nasema for by him kwa yeye where all things created mambo yote yaliumbwa by him kwa yeye meaning without him inamaanisha bila yeye no creation hakuna uumbaji the heaven and the earth mbingu na nchi things were created mambo yaliyoumbwa you see things that were visible unaona yale mambo yaliyokuwa yanaonekana and things that are invisible yale mambo yaliyo yasionekana where they are be thrones hata kama kulikuwa hapo na viti vya enzi dominions mamlaka even principalities usultani even powers na nguvu were created by him viliumbwa naye meaning that hiyo inamaanisha when you believe that man unapomwamini huyo mtu you possess all things unamiliki vitu vyote that's why he said ndio maana alisema i am the resurrection and life mimi ndio fufuo na uzima meaning that when you have him inamaanisha unapokuwa naye you shall never die utaweza kufa because is the resurrection kwa sababu yeye ni ufufuo even if you die today hata ukifa leo you are alive somewhere wewe unaishi mahali fulani because you are carrying the resurrection kwa sababu unabeba ufufuo pamoja nao He was a simple man. Yeye alikuwa mtu rahisi. We just want to look at this man. Tunataka tumtazame huyu mtu. Before we enter too much into the Bible. Kabla tujaingia sana kwenye Biblia. We just want to look at him. Tunataka tumtazame yeye. Because he's been mentioned in the Bible. Maana anatajwa kwenye Biblia. But he had two parts. Lakini alikuwa na sehemu mbili. The other part was a human being. Sehemu moja alikuwa ni mtu. The other part was God himself. Sehemu nyingine alikuwa ni Mungu mwenyewe. By the Bible in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Ndio maana Biblia katika kitabu cha Filipi sura ya pili The Bible says Biblia inasema Let that mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you. Hebu ile nia iliyokuwa ndani ya Kristo Yesu iwe ndani yenu. We can only be Christians once we take the mind of Christ. Tunaweza kuwa Kristo pale tunapopokea nia ya Kristo. But he it been found in a fashion as a man lakini yeye alipopatikana katika namna ya mwanadamu he did not take it nobody to be equal with god hakuchukua hakujiona kuwa ata, a, bola abakie kuwa sawa na mungu the bible says biblia nasema he was found in a fashion as a man aliku alionekana yuna namna ya mwanadamu now the question was was he a man sasa swali nauliza je alikuwa mwanadamu no, jibu ni kwamba hapana kuwa mwanadamu but he just humbled himself in a fashion like lakini alijinyenyekeza kwa namna ya mwanadamu and the bible says na biblia nasema who being in the form of god yeye akiwa katika umbo la mungu thought it not nobody to be equal with god Hakuona si jambo la kushikamana nalo kukuwa sawa na Mungu. If people cannot see Jesus to be God, kama watu hawezi kumuona Yesu kuwa Mungu, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hawezi kuingia ufalme wa Mungu. That's why he said in John 17. Ndio maana alisema katika Yohana sura ya 17, Father glorify thy son. Baba mtukuze mwanao. With the glory we had in the beginning. Na ule utukufu tuliokuwa nao kabla ya mwanzo. So he knew his position. Kwa alijua mahali pake. And God didn't say I want to glorify you. Na ye, Mungu akusema sitakutukuza. But God said I will glorify you. Na Mungu akasema hakika nitakutukuza. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
but made himself of no reputation lakini alijifanya mwenyewe asiye na heshima and took upon him the form of a servant na akachukua umbo la mtumishi and he was made in the likeness of men na akafanyika katika mfano wa wanadamu and being found in fashion as a man na alipopatikana na namna kama ya mwanadamu meaning he wasn't a man hiyo inamaanisha hakuwa mwanadamu but he was just found as a man and why was he found as a man because sin originated from heaven kwa sababu dhambi ilianzia mbinguni jealous originated from heaven Wivu ulianzia mbinguni. Hatred originated from heaven. Chuki ilianzia mbinguni. All this war we see fighting Israel Iraq anywhere came from heaven. Hivi vita vyote tunavyoviona vikipiganwa Israel Iraq huko kote vilianzia mbinguni. And that was the war of angels. Na hivyo vilikuwa vita vya malaika. And that war. Na hivyo vita. The Bible says. Biblia nasema. In Revelation chapter 12. Katika mfumo 12. On verse 7. Katika mstari wa 7. There was war in heaven. Kulikuwa na vita mbinguni. Michael and his angels fighting against his the dragon and his angels Mikael na malaika zake wakipigana kati ya joka na malaika zake So war started from heaven Kwa vita vilianzia mbinguni Until the devil was casted out to the earth Mpaka shetani alipotupa chini duniani He came down here with his angels Alikaja hapa chini na malaika zake And the prophet is saying Na nabii anasema That animal the devil Huyo mnyama ibilisi He came to paralyze the earth akaja kutia ganzi ulimdunia no man worthy to fight this devil hakuna mtu aliyeweza kustahili kupigana na huyu ibilisi there was no man to redeem mankind hakupa alikuwa hakuna mtu akukomboa wanadamu hallelujah hallelujah but god said lakini mungu alisema i will go down nitakwenda chini it took god himself ili chukua ili lazimu Mungu mwenyewe to come down kuja chini because God planned for this earth kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa na mpango na hii dunia he planned everything which would take place alipangilia kila kitu ambacho kingetukia God saw that there shall be meetings in Dar es Salaam today Mungu aliona kwamba kutakuwa na mikutano hapa Dar es Salaam leo God saw the people who shall attend the meeting na Mungu akaona watu ambao watahudhuria mkutano leo There's nothing which can pass God and aware. Hakuna kitu kinachokampita Mungu asitambue. Because before he created anything. Kwa sababu kabla hajaumba chochote, we can take a trip now. Tunaweza tukaanza safari sasa. Before we speak on Satan. Kabla tujanena kuhusu ibilisi. Let's go to the message question and answers. Hebu tuende katika ujumbe maswali na majibu. 53 53 Uh, 53 0729 uh, saba, that is question and answers on genesis hao ni maswali na majibu kuhusu mwanzo see how anointed the prophet was tazama jinsi nabii alivyokuwa ametiwa mafuta that's why this man ndio maana huyu mtu No man can compare himself with this one. Hakuna mtu anaweza akajilinganisha na huyu. This man, who mtu? All lesses in the world. Wal manes jamaa zote ulimwenguni. They are following the message of this man. Wanafuata ujumbe wa huyu mtu. They have never been a denomination hapajawahi kuwa na dhehebu which will be more greater than the message of this man. Ambayo itakuwa kuu kuliko ujumbe wa huyu mtu. Look at that pill of fire. Tazama hiyo nguzo ya moto. That's the one which led Israel from the land of captivity to the promised land. Hiyo ndio iliyoongoza Israeli kutoka katika nchi ya utumwa wao mpaka nchi ya Hadi. That's the same pill of fire which met Moses. Hiyo ndio nguzo ile ile ya moto iliyokutana na Musa. Remember Moses had the revelation. Kumbuka Musa alikuwa na ufunuo. In Exodus 19, katika kutoka 19, God, God told Moses to put a boundary. 
Mungu alimwambia Musa aweke mpaka to that mountain. Kwenye ule mlima. That no man or beast should touch that mountain. Ili kwamba mtu au mnyama asiguse ule mlima. Anyone who goes closer to that mountain will die. Yoyote atakayekaribia ule mlima angekufa. That was the instruction God gave it to Moses. Hayo ni maelekezo ambayo Mungu alimpa Musa. Not even an animal. Hata mnyama. It has to die. Unge ange kufa. And God descended on Mount Sinai. Na Mungu akashuka juu ya mlima Sinai. Thunders and lightning were flashing all over Mount Sinai. Gurumo na radi zilikuwa zikimemetesha mlimani kote. And the voice spoke from above. Na sauti kanena kutoka juu. Then Israel. Ndipo Israel. Said is this the God we are coming to meet? Je, huyu ndiye Mungu tunayokuja kukutana naye? Ah then we are not ready to meet such a God. Bana tuko tayari kukutana Mungu aina hii. And remember that say, God. Kumbuka Mungu huyo huyo. Is the same God you are serving today. Mungu huyo huyo unamtumikia leo. The way he appeared to Israel. Jinsi alivyoonekana kwa Israeli. Is the way he has come today. Ndio hivyo hivyo alivyokuja leo. They said Moses. Wakasema Musa. Just speak to your God. Wewe nena na Mungu wako. Then speak to us. Ndipo utanena na sisi. Then we shall listen. Sisi tutasikia. This God we serve. Huyu Mungu tunayemtumikia. We can't play around with him. Hatuwezi kumchezea chezea. The problem we don't know who he is. Shida hatujui yeye ni nani. He has not changed. Haja badilika. He has just come in the form of this man here. Amekuja tu katika umbo la huyu mtu namna hii. This is why we have mercy today. Ndio maana tuna tuna rehema leo. You see God said to Moses. Unaona Mungu akamnena na Musa. Come to the mountain. Njo mlimani. Where they were flashing lightning and thunders. Wakati ambapo kwa hapo tulikuwa tumemetesha radi na ngurumo. Moses entered the mountain without it trouble. Mungu aka, uh, Musa kaingia mlimani bila shida. But to Israel they were like dead men. Lakini kwa Israeli walikuwa kama wafu. Because the grace is different. Kwa sababu ile neema ni tofauti. We have different levels of grace. Tuna tuna uh, tuna ki, Viwango tofauti vya neema. We are not on the same level. Hatuko katika kiwango kimoja. Yes, we are all believers. Ndio, sote ni waamini. But the grace is different. Lakini ile neema ni tofauti. Just like the grace on Elisha the prophet and the grace on Gehaz was different. Kama tu vile neema juu ya Elisha nabii ilikuwa tofauti na Gehazi. Elisha saw the chariots of fire. Elisha aliona magari ya moto. But Gehazi did not see them. Lakini Gehazi hakuona. It took the pl- fetia Elisha to pray. Ikahitaji uh, nabii Elisha muombe. God open the eyes of the young man. Mungu ufungua macho ya kijana. That he can see. Ili aweze kuona. And God heard the prophet of Elisha. Na Mungu akamsikiliza nabii Elisha. And he opened the eyes of Gehazi. Na akafungua macho ya Gehazi. And he saw the mountain was covered with chariots. Na akaona mlima umefunikwa na magari ya moto. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. God when he created Adam, Mungu alipomuumba Adam, he created him in a lower creation of God. Alimuumba katika kiwango kidogo cha Mungu. But the first creation lakini uumbaji wa kwanza. The prophet is saying on paragraph 22 here. Na Biblia anasema katika katika paragraph ya 22 hapa. The first creation was God himself. Uumbaji wa kwanza ulikuwa ni Mungu mwenyewe. Then out of God came the logos. Nipo kutoka kwa Mungu akaja logos which was the son of God. Ambao ndio ulikuwa mwana wa Mungu. In the beginning. Hapo mwanzo. God was in eternity. Mungu alikuwa katika umilele. Before there was any space of time. Kabla hapaja kuepo na na wak- wakati yet god existed in eternity hata hivyo mungu alikuwa akiishi katika umilele he was elohim alikuwa elohim self existence one yule aishie peke yake with so many tribute attributes akiwa na sifa nyingi ndani yake in him was so many thinkings Ma- ndani yake kulikuwa hapo na mawazo mengi and the first creation he did na uumbaji wa kwanza aliyofanya he created himself 
alijiumba mwenyewe out of god kutoka kwa Mungu came the logos akatoka logos which we call the word today ama tunaliita neno leo that's what the bible says hivyo ndivyo biblia nasema christ is the express of the invisible god kristo ndiye umbo la Mungu asioonekana that word the logos Hilo neno logos it, it was expressed from god himself ili toka au lilielezwa kutoka kwa Mungu mwenyewe it appeared ikaonekana before there was no star kabla kujana nyota yoyote no moon hakuna jua no movement hakuna msogeo wote nothing else hakuna chochote kile but god covered all space lakini Mungu alijaza nafasi yote because god is god of infinity kwa sababu Mungu ni Mungu asiye na kikomo omnipresent yeye ni aliyeko mahali kote. Is everywhere. Yeye yuko kila mahali. He was in the beginning. Alikuwa kule mwanzo. This is what the prophet is saying. Hivi ndivyo nabii anasema. In the beginning was the word. Hapo mwanzo kulikuwa huko neno. And the word was with God. Na neno alikuwa kwa Mungu. And the word was God. Na neno alikuwa Mungu. And the word was made flesh. Na neno alifanyika mwili. And dwelt among us. Akakaa kwetu. Out of the logos came forth the man. Na ku toka kwa logos akaja mtu Amen. Haleluya. That's why Philippians is saying. Ndio maana Filipi anasema being found in a fashion as a man. Alipoonekana yu na namna ya mwanadamu. He wasn't a man. Hakuwa mwanadamu. He came from eternity. Alitoka umileleni. But he took upon a form of a man. Lakini akachukua umbo la mwanadamu. God came walking on earth. Na Mungu akaja akitembea duniani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were two. Walikuwa wawili. With his father. Na baba yake. The one you call the father. Yule unemuita baba. The denomination are confused. Wa, wa, madhebu wamechanganyikiwa. They come up with three people. Wanakuja na watu watatu. They call the father. Wanaita baba. And they call the spirit. Wanaita roho. That father is the internal spirit. Lakini huyo baba ndiye roho wa milele. And that spirit has got the word and the thinkings. Na huyo roho ana neno na mawazo. And that word was called the son. Na huyo na hilo neno lilikuwa linaitwa mwana. No three people there. Hakuna watu watatu pale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you say they are free kama ukisema ni watatu the bible says bibia anasema gabriel came to mary gabriel alikuja kwa mariam he said akasema mary shall have shall conceive a son maria atapata mtoto and that son shall be called jesus na huyo mtoto ataitwa yesu he went to gabriel to, to joseph akaenda kwa Yusufu. You know Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant. Unajua Yusufu alitambua kwamba Maria ana mimba. He didn't want to make a public example. Hakutaka kumfanya kituko cha wazi. But he said they shall live here privately. Akasema ah ili nitaliacha kisirisi. While Joseph was thinking on those lines. Wakati Yusufu anafikiria kwenye hiyo mistari hiyo kati ya Gabriel came to Joseph in a dream. Gabriel akaja kwa Yusufu kwenye ndoto. Do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Usiogope kumchukua Maria kama mkeo. What is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Kile kilichotungwa mimba ndani yake ni cha Roho Mtakatifu. The Bible says what is conceived in her is of the Father. Na Biblia inasema kile ambacho amepata mimba ni cha Baba. Haisemi, haisemi hivyo. Haisemi hivyo kama kana kwamba kwa watatu. If the Holy Ghost is God, kama Roho Mtakatifu ni Mungu, and the Father is God, na, ba, na Baba ni Mungu, who is the owner of the child? Hasa, mmiliki wa mtoto ni nani? For the Bible says what is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Kwa sababu Biblia inasema ikile kilicho ndani ya ndani ya mimba yake ni cha Roho Mtakatifu. And Jesus claims to say I come from my Father. Na Yesu anasema natoka kwa baba yangu. Then Jesus has two fathers. Ndipo sa Yesu ana baba wawili. But it's not like that. Lakini sio hivyo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see Paul was a Jew. Unaona Paulo alikuwa Myahudi. And the Jews believed in one true God. 
na wayahudi waliamini Mungu mmoja wa kweli and the pope believed that the only one true god is jehovah god na paulo akaamini Mungu pekee wa kweli ni Mungu yehova a jew cannot believe another god Myahudi uh, wazaka amini Mungu yote mwingine. That's why Jesus they said when he said your sins are forgiven. They said the blasphemy. Ndio maana Yesu aliposema dhambi zako zimesamehewa, wakamwambia anakufuru because they knew that God is only Jehovah. Kwa sababu alijua kwamba Mungu ni Yehova pekee yake. But look when Paul was converted. Lakini tazama wakati Paulo ame ameokoka. Ame, ame, ame when the pillar of fire struck him wakati nguzo ya moto ilipokutana naye the word says so so why are you persecuting me neno lisema sauli sauli mbona wanitesa look at the answer tazama majibu who are you lord ni nani wewe bwana so paul recognized that one to be lord kwa paulo alimtambua huyo kuwa bwana and he expected to hear that i am jehovah of israel na akategemea kwamba angesikia kwamba mimi ni jehovah wa israel but on the contrary lakini kinyume chake he said i am jesus whom thou akasema mimi ni yesu unayemtesa hallelujah hallelujah That's why Paul was very much sure. Dio maana Paulo alikuwa na uhakika sana. To say this Jesus Christ is Lord. Kwa kusema huyu Yesu Kristo ni Bwana. And when you read the Acts chapter in Acts chapter 20 verse 28, unaposoma katika matendo 20 mstari wa 28, the, Paul was saying, Paulo alikuwa akisema, take it amongst yourself. Ebu kweni makini wenyewe with all the flocks na makundi yenu mlionayachunga the Holy Ghost has made you as overseers ambao roho mtakatifu amewafanya kama waangalizi to watch over the flocks which he purchased with his own precious blood kuvichunga kundi ambalo yeye alilinua kwa damu yake mwenyewe amen does the Holy Ghost have blood je roho mtakatifu ana damu who purchased it in the church nani ali 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 alinunua ali kanisa that was jesus christ ni yesu kristo but he's saying the holy ghost has purchased it with his own blood lakini paulo anasema ro mtakatifu amelinunua kanisa na damu yake mwenyewe but the one who shed the blood it wasn't the holy ghost or the father Lak, lakini aliyemwaga damu si ro mtakatifu wala sio baba It was Jesus Christ. Ilikuwa ni Yesu Kristo. So meaning Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Sasa inamaanisha Yesu ni Roho Mtakatifu. Jesus Christ is the Father. Inamaanisha Yesu Kristo ni Baba. That's why he said glorify me with the glory we had in the beginning. Ndio maana alisema nitukuze na ule utukufu uliokuwa nao kule mwanzo. Amen. And in first Timothy chapter 3, na katika Timotheo wa kwanza sura ya 3, verse 16, mstari wa 16, Paul is saying Paulo anasema and without argument or controversy na bila mabishano au ukakasi great is the mystery of godliness ni kuu sana siri ya uungu god was manifested in the flesh mungu alidhihirishwa katika mwili that Jehovah in the Old Testament Bila Yehova wa agano la kale appeared in the flesh alionekana katika mwili and he was justified in the spirit na akahesabiwa haki katika roho Paul is saying he's seen of angels na akaonekana na malaika because angels were a surprise kwa sababu malaika walishangaa to see how God unfolded himself jinsi Mungu alivyojifunua mwenyewe coming to appear like a baby na akaonekana kama mtoto mchanga they said who is this god wakasema huyu kijana ni nani huyu Mungu ni nani ni Mungu wa ajabu preached unto in the world yes. preached unto the gentiles akahubiriwa na matai kwa mataifa and believed on in the world na akaaminiwa na ulimwangu and received up in glory na akapokelewa utukufuni after accomplishing everything baada ya kumaliza kila kitu he said i must go akasema lazima niondoke if i don't go kama siwezi kwenda the holy ghost won't come huyo roho mtakatifu hatakuja meaning he has to go ina maanisha anapaswa kwenda because he came into three sons name kwa sababu alikuja katika majina 
watatu ya wana He came as a son of man Jesus as a prophet Kwa sababu alikuja kama mwana wa Adam Yesu akafa msalabani So he finished the ministry as a son of man Kwa alimaliza huduma kama mwana wa Adam Then he should leave the earth Nipo itabidi aiache dunia and come back as a son of god aludi tena kama mwana wa mungu meaning jesus as a spirit ka ina maanisha yesu kama roho haleluya haleluya is the son of god today leo ni mwana wa mungu jesus as a spirit yesu kama roho i will come back some other time na atakuja wakati mwingine in the millennium katika utawala wa miaka 1000 together with the wife akiwa pamoja na mkewe as a son of david kama mwana wa Daudi to sit upon the throne of his father kukati katika kiti cha enzi cha baba yake is the same yesterday today ni yeye yule jana leo na hata milele hallelujah hallelujah look at our marvelous cities tazama jinsi ilivyo ajabu the prophet is saying this nabii anasema hivi on paragraph 23 katika paragraph ya 23 oh i got a beautiful picture in my mind now sasa nimnapata picha nzuri niani mwangu sasa if you can take a little trip with me kama unaweza kufanya safari ndogo pamoja nami i believe i have talked on it before na amini nimeshawahi kuongelea hii manzoni but to get to this to the place where you will sure to see it lakini hebu mfike mahali ambapo mtakuwa na uhakika mmeliona. Let's take a little trip and go back for a little while. Hebu twende safari ndogo mbali alafu tutarudi baadaye kidogo. So the prophet now coming out of the is human form. Sasa nabii anatoka katika hali ya wanadamu. Now is not a man. Sasa si mtu. He enters into the supernatural now. Sasa anaingia katika hali ya kimbinguni. To go and see the supernatural things. Ili aze kuona mambo ya kimbinguni. He want now to see who God was before there was anything. Sasa anataka aone jinsi Mungu alikuwa kabla kujua na chochote. For the word of God comes to a prophet. Kwa sababu neno la Mungu humjia nabii. Now he has gone back not to Genesis. Sasa ajarudi tu si hapa mwanzo. But he has gone back to the mind of God. Lakini amerudi kule niani mwa Mungu. Where you and me belongs to the mind of God. Ambapo mimi na wewe tu wa akiwania ya Mungu because the prophet in the message who is this makes the deck kwa sababu nabii katika ujumbe huyu Melkizedek ni nani he said we by pastor our fear fan to come and be tempted of the devil anasema tulivuka fiofania zetu tuje kujaribiwa na shetani yet where we came from we shall go back lakini kule tulikotoka tutarudi hakika because our fear fan is there Usabu siofanya zetu ziko kule. This is what made you to stay here. Hiyo ndio sababu imekufanya uketi hapa. Because the original you is somewhere else. Kwa sababu yule wako halisi yuko kule pengine. You just come to this world to pass by. Umekuja tu hapa ulimwenguni kupita. God cannot save you here. Mungu hawezi kukuokoa hapa and lose you there. Na kupoteza kule. You are saved whilst you are here. Unaokolewa ukiwa hapa. This is why you have believed in the word of God. Ndio maana umeamini neno la Mungu. Because your fear fan is in glory. Kwa sababu fear fan yako iko utukufuni. We are only in this earthly body. Tu katika ju mwili huu wa wa duniani but very soon lakini mara tu we shall join our fiofan tutaungana na fiofania yetu where we came from kula tulikotoka where the saints are marching on ambapo watakatifu wanatembea mbele and there is no trouble anymore na kuna shida tena hallelujah hallelujah amen amen The way it is hot now. Na jinsi ilivyo na joto sasa. It was also hot in the days of the prophet. Ilikuwa na na, na joto ki, kipindi cha nabii. Amen. Amen. The prophet says. Nabii anasema, don't think about how hot it is. Msifikiri jinsi ilivyo na joto sasa hivi. Let's get our mind right on what we are going to talk about and think now. Hebu tuji tukusanye akili zetu kuhusu kile tunachokiongo tunachokiongelea na tuazie hilo sasa. Let's go back a hundred million years before there was a star. 
Hebu turudi miaka milioni 100 kabla ya kujawa na nyota. The prophet is in the mind of God now. Sasa nabii yuko katika akili ya Mungu sasa. He is seeing what was happening before there was everything. Anaangalia kile kilichokuepo kabla ya kujawa na chochote. Moon or anything in the world. Mwezi au chochote hapa duniani. Now there was a time when there wasn't nothing here. Sasa kulikuwaepo na muda ambapo palikuwa hamna chochote hapa. It was just all forever and eternity. Palikuwa kote ni umilele na umilele. And all the ever and eternity was God. Lakini wakati wote dawamu na umilele ulikuwa ni wa Mungu. He was there in the beginning. Alikuwa kule katika mwanzo. Now let's go out here and the edge of this bunny star hebu twende hapa nje katika wakati wa hii nyota inawaka and look over and see these things happen na tuangalie tuone haya mambo yanatendekaje now no man has seen the father at any time sasa hapana mtu aliyemuona baba wakati wowote no man can see god in the bodily form hakuna mtu anaweza kumuona mungu katika umbo la mwili because god is not in body form kwa sababu mungu hayupo katika umbo la mwili god is a spirit Mungu ni roho. All right, no man has seen the father but the only begotten of the father has declared him. Vema hakuna mtu amewahi kumuona baba isipokuwa mwana pekee amemtangaza, amemdhihirisha. That's John 1. Hiyo ni Yohana 1. Now but notice now there is nothing. Sasa tambua kwamba hakuna chochote hapa. There is just space. Ni nafasi kubwa tu. There is no light. Hakuna mwanga. There is no dark. Hakuna giza. There is nothing. Hakuna lolote. It just seems nothing. Inaonekana ni tupu. But in there is a great supernatural being. Lakini pale kuna kiumbe cha kibinguni. Jehovah God who covers all space of all places at all times. Jehovah anaye full anaye Jaza kila mahali katika kila wakati wote. He was from everlasting from everlasting. Yeye alikuwa tangu milele mpaka milele. He is the beginning of the creation. Yeye ni mwanzo wa kuumba kwa waumbaji. That's God. Huyo ni Mungu. Can't you see nothing? How siwezi kuona chochote. Can't you hear nothing? How siwezi kusikia chochote. Not a move of an atom. Siwezi kusikia hata msogeo wa atom in the air. Hapo katika anga not nothing sisi kichochote no air no nothing hakuna hewa hakuna chochote but yet god was there lakini hata hivyo mungu alikuwa pale that was god huyo alikuwa mungu let's watch for a few minutes hebu tazama dakika chache baada ya muda no man has seen that now hakuna mtu amewahi kuona hiyo sasa that's the father god the father sasa huyo ni mungu mungu baba now notice sasa tazama then after a while ndipo baada ya muda i begin to see ninaanza kuona a little sacred light begin to form nuru ndogo ndogo inaanza kuumbika the prophet began to see a little sacred light begin to form Nabii anaanza kuona nuru fulani ndogo maalum inaanza kuumbika like a little halo or something you could only see it by supernatural eyes duala ndogo ya nuru ambayo tu unaweza kuiona kwa jicho la kibinguni and look now tazama sasa we are looking in the whole church now Tunatazama kanisa lote sasa. We are standing on a great big banister. Tunasimama tuna hapa katika ngazi kubwa. Watching God doing. Ukingo mkubwa tukitazama vile Mungu anafanya. No one has seen God. Hakuna mtu aliwahi kumuona Mungu. And now the next thing we begin to see by eyes of supernatural looking. Sasa jambo la pili tunaanza kuliona kwa macho ya kibinguni. We see a little white light forming out there tunaona nuru ndogo nyeupe ikiumbika pale what is that hiyo ni nini that was called by bible readers logos hiyo iliitwa kwa kwa somaji wa biblia logos the anointed yule mtii wa mafuta the anointing upako 
as I was going to say, the part of God begin to develop into something so human being. Kama nivyokuwa nilianza kusema kwamba sehemu ya Mungu ilianza kutengenezeka kama mwanadamu so that human being could have some type of an idea what it was. Ili kwamba watu wae na na na, na wazo fulani ilikuwa ya namna gani. Was a little light moving. Ilikuwa ni nuru ndogo ikitembea. That was the word of God. Hilo lilikuwa neno la Mungu. Now God gave himself birth to this son which was before there was even an atom. Sasa Mungu alijizalia mwenyewe mwana wa namna hii kabla kujawa na atom hata moja. Hallelujah. Amen. The son was being formed. Yule mwana alikuwa ameumbika in a form of a light. Katika umbo la nuru. That's why he said in the beginning. Ndio maana alisema kule mwanzo hapo mwanzo. Kulikuwa kwa na neno. And the word was with God. Na neno alikuwa na uh, kwa Mungu. And the word was God. Na neno alikuwa Mungu. In him. Na ndani yake. There was light. Kulikuwa na nuru. And that light na hiyo nuru was the life of all men here. Kwa ni uzima wa watu wote hawa. Because a man is designed to live in the light. Kwa sababu mtu ameumbwa aishi nuruni. Because without light, kwa sababu bila nuru, there can never be time. Hapo kuwezi kuwa na wakati. Without light, bila nuru, there can never be bottom life. Hapo hakuwezi kuwa na maisha ya mimea. Without light, bila nuru everything will flows here kila kitu kitaganda hapa because light is what brings the life kwa sababu nuru ndio inaleta uzima hallelujah amen and the bible says na biblia nasema the light came to shine in darkness nuru ilikuja kuangaza katika giza and the darkness did not comprehend it na giza haikuweza kuistahimili in him there was life na ndani yake kulikuwa na nuru and that life was the li- that light was the life of people na hiyo nuru ilikuwa uzima wa watu that's why he came and said i am the light of the world ndio maana alikuja akasema mimi ni nuru ya ulimwengu he that shall walk with me yeye atakayetembea na mimi he shall never stumble hata jikwa kamwe anyone who walks in the light yeyote atembea katika nuru he will never stumble hata jikwa kabisa because the darkness has no power kwa sababu giza halina sehemu and the light is the word of god na nuru ni neno la mungu when the word comes upon someone wakati neno linapokuja juu ya mtu fulani you shall know the truth utajua kweli and the truth shall set you free na kweli itakuweka huru because the gospel of light has shining in your kwa sababu nuru ya injili imekuangazia wewe hallelujah hallelujah we thank god for that tunamshukuru mungu kwa ajili ya hilo That was Jesus said. Hiyo ndio yes Yesu alivyosema. Glorify me Father. Ndio maana Yesu alisema Baba nitukuze. With the glory that we had before the foundation of the world. Kwa ule utukufu tuliokuwa nao kabla ya msingi wa ulimwengu. See we back yonder. Akitazama kule nyuma kabisa. And the prophet has quoted first John. Na nabii akanukuu Yohana moja. Now back there then when this little halo comes sasa kule nyuma wakati hii duara ya nuru imekuja we can't see nothing yet but just by eyes of supernatural hatuwezi kuona chochote hatuwezi kuona chochote kingine isipokuwa kwa macho ya kimbinguni this little halo came from eternity hii duara ndogo ya nuru itoka kutoka katika umilele the image of the invisible god sura ya mungu asionekana Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. Yoyote atakaye niona mimi amemuona Baba. Because the sin came from heaven. Kwa sababu dhambi ilitoka mbinguni mbinguni God created man in his own image. Mungu aliumba mtu kwa sura yake. He created man in the image of God which is the spirit. Alimuumba mtu kwa sura ya Mungu ambaye ni roho. 
And then he covered him with the flesh. Nipo akamfunika kwa nyama. And the prophet is saying, na nabii anasema, God created himself in the image of a man. Mungu alijumba mwenyewe kwa sura ya mtu. And that man was born in a manger. Na huyo mtu alizaliwa kwenye holi la ngombe. God in a man. Mungu ndani ya mtu. That light. Kale ile nuru. That's why Colossians is saying. Ndio maana Colossae inasema by him kwa yeye all things consist. Mambo yote yanashikamana na ndani yake. So our worship na kwa ibada yetu we have to worship in him. Tunapaswa tuabudu ndani yake. We have to God by him. Inapaswa tumtumikie kwa yeye. Anything outside him kichochote nje yake is not accepted by God. Hakikubaliki na Mungu. Your worship and my worship ibada yako na ibada yangu should be by him. Inapaswa iwe kwa yeye and in him. Na ndani yake. You have to come to church. Unapaswa uje kanisani by his will. Kwa mapenzi yake. Not the will of somebody. Si mapenzi ya mtu fulani. Other people they worship wengine wanaabudu because they have parents who worship there. Ni kwa sababu wazazi wao wanaabudu hapo. Other people they go to church wengine wanaenda kanisani because their relatives they go to church. Ni kwa sababu ndugu zao wanakwenda kanisani. Even the time and offering the brother was preaching hata zaka na sadaka ambazo ndugu alikuwa akihubiri if you can't do it by him kama uwezi kufanya kwa yeye what you are doing is nothing. Ndipo kila unafanya ni bure. That's why you find people. Ndio maana unakuta watu this month they are faithful. Humak mwezi huu ni waaminifu. The next month they are criminals. Mwa mwezi unaofuata ni wahalifu because they do things kwa sababu wanafanya mambo outside him nje yake because if you do things kwa sababu kama ukifanya mambo everything you do katika kila kitu unachokifanya it has to be by him inapaswa iwe kwa yeye and when you do by him na unapofanya kwa yeye you don't need anyone to instruct you huhitaji yoyote akuelekeze because him is all in you kwa sababu yeye tayari yuko ndani yako him is your leader yeye ni kiongozi wako he doesn't need you don't need anybody to tell you what to do how itaji mtu yote akwambie la kufanya you already know the duty of a believer umeshajua tayari wajibu wa muamini but if you are struggling lakini kama unajitahidi even to come to church ku atakuja tu kanisani today you are in church Leo uko kanisani tomorrow you are not kesho uko then i doubt nipo natilia shaka if your fear fan is there kama fear fan yako iko kule because the prophet says kwa sababu nabii alisema what you are here kila ulicho hapa that's how you shall be there kicho licho utakachokuwa kule if the man in this body kama mtu katika mwili huu doesn't like prayers hapendi maombi even that man in that body hata yule mtu katika ule mwili does not love prayers hapendi maombi you are saved whilst you are here unaomba unaokolewa ukiwa hapa what you are here vile ulivyo hapa is what the other man is somewhere there ndivyo yule mtu mwingine kule alivyo hallelujah hallelujah this man when he came in this world huyu mtu alipokuja hapa duniani many people didn't know him watu wengi hawakumjua many people didn't believe him watu wengi hawakumwamini now look at this roman centurion sasa tazama huyu akida wa kirumi this man had a servant who was sick huyu mtu alikuwa hapo na mtumishi alikuwa ana mgonjwa yet he had faith in Jesus Christ hata hivyo alikuwa na imani kwa Yesu Kristo he was a roman yeye alikuwa mrumi he didn't know too much about the jewish religion hakujua sana ya, ya, ya dini ya, ki, ya kiyahudi yet he had faith in Jesus Christ lakini hata hivyo alikuwa na maamini Yesu So he called for Jesus. Kwa alimuita Yesu. Lord Jesus, Bwana Yesu, come and pray for my servant. Njoombe mtumishi wangu. He's suffering from the spirit of pause. Ana 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 anatsumbuka na roho ya 
And Jesus said, Poza. I will come and heal him. Na Yesu akasema, nitakuja nimponye. And you look at this man. Tazama huyu mtu. Look at the approach. Tazama alivyomkaribia. Look at his attitude. Tazama mtazamo wake. He didn't approach feeling that he had it Haku, coming to him. Hakumjia aki akifikiri aki kwamba an, anacho akisi kwamba anacho. But he said I am one of Akasema mimi sistahili for you to come under my roof. I, wewe uje chini ya dari yangu. But just speak the way. Lakini nena tu neno. Ma, and my servant shall live. Na huyu mtumishi wangu ataishi. Because I'm a man under authority. Kwa sababu mimi ni mtu mwenye mamlaka. Remember this man was a military personnel. Unajua kumbuka huyu mtu alikuwa ni ni, ni, ni commander wa jeshi. He was a great man. Alikuwa mtu mkubwa. So he took that authority he had. Kwa sababu kwa hiyo alichukua ile mamlaka aliyokuwa nayo. He, he, he saw that same authority in Jesus over the evil spirits. Akaona mamlaka yale yale ndani ya Yesu kuhusu roho chafu. He said, akasema I'm a man under authority. Mimi ni mtu nilia na mamlaka. When I call someone to say come, nikimwita mtu fulani aje, that person comes. Huyo mtu anakuja. When I say go, nikisema nenda, the person goes. Huyo mtu anaondoka. Whoever I say do this, nikisema fanya hivi, he also do that. Anafanya hivyo. So just speak the word. Sasa wewe nena tu neno. And my servant shall live. Na huyu mtumishi wangu ataishi. He was a gentle. Alikuwa ni mataifa. The spoken word. Neno lilonenwa. Is the original seed. Ni mbegu ya asili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak the word. Nena neno. My servant shall live. Mtumishi wangu ataishi. Gentle. Umataifa is by speaking the word. Ni kwa kunena neno. My servant shall live. Mtumishi wangu ataishi. There was a, another great man. Kulikuwa kuna mtu mwingine mkubwa. And that man was Jairus. Na huyo mtu mwingine alikuwa Yairo. Jairus was a Jew. Yairo alikuwa Myahudi. M- m- he had a daughter who was sick unto death. Alikuwa hapo na binti yake aliyekuwa na umwa anakaribia kufa. Because the Jews were trained in contact. Kwa sababu Wayahudi wa, wa walikuwa wamefundishwa kati kakugusana the Jew are trained in touching wayahudi wa, 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 wa wamefundishwa mpaka kugusa he went to jesus Waka, akaenda kwa yesu let's go and pray for my daughter twende ukamwombee binti yangu you see these two people unaona hawa watu wawili jaira said let's go you lay hand on my daughter yairo akasema nenda umweke mkono binti yangu so that my daughter can live ili kwamba binti yangu aweze kuishi But the other one said just to speak the word. Mwingine akasema nena tu neno. And my servant shall live. Na mtumishi wangu ataishi. You see? Unaona? Both of them are deaf in Jesus. What? Wanamtegemea Yesu. It is the way how you believe it. Ni vile unavyomwamini yeye. It shall be done according to your faith. Itafanyika kulingana imani yako. Because the other one said speak the word. Kwa sababu huyu anasema neno neno. My servant shall live. Mtumishi wangu atapoa ataishi. The other let's go and lay hands. Na mwingine anasema twende ukamweke mikono. My servant shall live. Ataishi binti yangu. And we discover that both of them were delivered. Na tunatambua kwamba wote walio walipata uponyaji wao. And the prophet is saying, na nabii anasema, it is according to the way you believe. Ni kulingana na vile unaamini. And it shall be done unto you. Na itatendeka hivyo kwako. Another person believes that Jesus will come on a white horse. Mwingine anaamini Yesu atakuja juu ya farasi mweupe. The other one says Jesus shall come on a white cloud. Mwingine anasema Yesu atakuja katika wingu jeupe. The prophet says as long as both of you believe that is coming there is no problem. Na nabii anasema ni mradi mnaamini nyote kwamba anakuja hakuna shida. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man humbled himself. Huyu mtu akajinyenyekeza. Because the gentle the Jews were trained in contact. Kwa sababu Wayahudi walifundishwa mpaka kugusa. But we the Gentiles. Lakini sisi mataifa. We are not trained in contact. Hatujafundishwa mpaka ugusa. The Holy Ghost can come even before contact. Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kaja hata kabla ya kugusa kwa kwa mikono. Jesus was a Gentile. 
Yule Cornelio alikuwa mataifa. Why is Peter was speaking the word? Wakati ye Petro akina na maneno. Because that man believed the word of God. Kwa sababu yule mtu aliamini neno la Mungu. The Holy Ghost came even before they were baptized. Roho mtakatifu akaja hata kabla hawajabatizwa. And they had they circumcised they were astonished. Na walikuwa hawajatairiwa na walikuwa wanajionea aibu. These people have received the Holy Ghost. Na waliotairiwa wali alijionea aibu. Wakashangaa. These people have received the Holy Ghost. Hao watu wamepokea Roho Mtakatifu. We know that the Holy Ghost only comes when you are baptized. Tunajua kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anakuja unapobatizwa. But Cornelius and the group. Lakini Cornelius na kundi lake received the Holy Ghost wali, before they were baptized. Walipokea Roho Mtakatifu hata kabla hawajabatizwa. Because it is the faith of the Gentile. Kwa sababu ni imani ya mataifa. A Gentile believes in the spoken word. Mataifa wanaamini neno lilo nenwa. Because the spoken can word is the original Kwa sababu neno lilo neno ndio mbegu ya asili. William Branham came with that self the Lord. William Branham alikuja na hivi asema Bwana. The spoken word. Hilo ni neno lilo nenwa. Let there be squeal. Hatabu pale kuwe na kidu. Na wale kidu wakaumbwa kwa neno lilo nenwa. Because we are the gentle. Kwa sababu sisi ni mataifa. Oh God wants his faith in this man. Mungu anayotaka yote ni imani ndani ya huyu mtu. Ukemu in a form of a human being. Mambo yalikuja katika umbo la mwanadamu. No matter what condition you may be here. Hajalishi una hali gani mahali hapa? If you can just raise your face. Kama ukiinua tu imani yako. Stand on the same ground. Na ukasimama mahali pale pale. And you say God. Na kusema Mungu. If you cannot do this. Kama huwezi kufanya hili. Then you are not worthy to be worshiped. Nipo ustahili kuabudiwa. But if you did this, lakini kama ulifanya vile and you are the same yesterday today and forever na wewe ni wewe yule jana leo hata milele you are obligated to do it unawajibika kulifanya hapa i want to go out until you do it sitaondoka mpaka ulifanye haleluya haleluya the man you are defeat mtu mtu alikuwa na imani jesus said Yesu akasema I've never seen this kind of faith. Sijawahi kuona imani ya namna hii. Not even in Israel. Hata Israel sijawahi kuiona. You see faith comes from the Gentiles. Unaona imani inatoka kwa mataifa. A Canaanite woman. Yule mwanamke mkana nayo. She had a daughter who was possessed. Alikuwa na na, na, na binti amepagawa na pepo. She went to Jesus for healing. Akaenda kwa Yesu ili aponywe. You know we should cried out. Unajua alilia. Jesus couldn't do you. Yesu asingemmsikia. The disciples say send him away because she's crying behind us. Akamwambia wanafunzi akamwambia muondoshe maana analia nyuma yetu. Jesus said. Yesu akasema I was not sent to anybody. Sijawahi sijatumwa kwa yeyote except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Nisipokuwa kondoo aliyopotea wa nyumba ya Israel. Then she persisted. Ndipo akangangania. To get something from God it is to endure. Kupata chochote kwa Mungu ni kungangania. The Bible says he that endure. Yule atakaye ngangania and to the end shall be. Yule atakaye vumilia mpaka mwisho ataokolewa. God wants persistence. Mungu anataka kungangania. When you persist God shall grant what you want. Unapongangania Mungu atakupatia unachotaka. Because Jesus said to this woman. Kwa sababu Yesu alimwambia huyu mwanamke good to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs si vizuri kuchukua chakula cha watoto na kuwapa mbwa meaning her being a gentle akimaanisha yeye kama mwanamke wa kimataifa she was a dog alikuwa ni mbwa she needed no any help from jesus hakuita kuitaji umsada wote kutoka kwa Yesu but she challenged Jesus lakini akampa changamoto Yesu she accepted to be a dog akakubali kuwa mbwa but yet she said nipaka sema even in the dog hata mbwa they also take part wanachukua makombo kamba which fall from the they are katika makombo ya kwenye meza ya bwana zao persistence kungangania kwake Jesus said Yesu akasema Woman what a great faith 
Akasema mwanamke wewe imani kuu namna gani? Let it be done. Hebu ifanyike. According to your will. Kulingana na unavyohitaji. I challenge anyone here. Nami na mchana mpa changamoto kila mmoja hapa. If you can have faith like those two people. Kama unaweza kuwa na imani kama watu hao wawili. Nothing will stop you from getting what you want. Hakuna kitu kitakuzuia kupata unachokitaka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are told in the Bible. Tunaambia katika Biblia that God sent a backslidden prophet. Mungu alimtuma nabii aliyerudi nyuma. He sent him to the big city of Nineveh. Akamtuma katika mji mkubwa wa Ninawi. You know where there are many people there is too much money. Unajua mali kuna watu wengi kuna pesa nyingi. Nineveh was a great city. Ninawi ilikuwa mji mkubwa. And the people were wicked in Nineveh. Na kule Ninawi kulikuwa watu walikuwa waovu. They were businessmen. Walikuwa watu wa biashara. All what they cared was business. Kile walichojali ni biashara zao. And they worshiped the sea monster. Na waka abudu ile nyota ya sim- ya samaki. God can make the works of the enemy to bring glory to him. Mungu anaweza kubadilisha kazi za adui zimletee utukufu. Every situation you may go, God will turn it to bring glory to him. Kila hali unayopitia Mungu anaweza kaigeuza imletee utukufu. Every situation you are passing through. Kila hali unayopitia before the foundation of the world. Kabla kwa msingi wa ulimwengu. He saw that you will pass through. Aliona utapitia hiyo. That it can bring glory to him. Kama inaweza kumpatia yeye utukufu. Just ask him. Wewe muombe tu. Why cry speak? Kwa nini unalia nena? And the prophet thought he has run away. Na nabii akadhani amekimbia. Instead of going to Nineveh. Badala ya kwenda Ninawi. He went to Tarshish. Akaenda Tarshish. Upon entering into the boat. Alipoingia kwenye ile boat. He paid his money. Akalipa pesa zake. And he went directly to sleep under the boat. Na akaenda kulala kule chini ya boat. Why did he go down? Kwa nini alienda kule chini? He knew that this God is coming. Alijua huyu Mungu atanifuata huyu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the people didn't know whom they carried. Na watu hawakujua waliyembeba ni nani. Touch not my anointed one. Usiguse watu wa mafuta wangu. Never discourage the anointed one of God. Usiwa su, u, usiwa usi, usiwa guse walio pakwa mafuta wa Mungu. A servant of God carries God. Yule mtumishi wa Mungu anabeba Mungu. No matter in your backslidden situation. Haijalishi katika hali yako ya kurudi nyuma. Just come back to God. When you to rudi kwa Mungu wherever you may go hapo pote unakokwenda there will be no peace until you come back to God hakuta na amani mpaka umerudi kwa Mungu because God never created you to be outside kwa sababu Mungu akukumba ukae uko nje you are a part of God wewe ni sehemu ya Mungu and you only find the comfort to God una huta utapata faraja kwa Mungu except you come back Hautapata faraja kwa Mungu mpaka umerudi. The prophet wanted to go to Tarshish. Nabii akataka kwenda Tarshish. Then God came down. Ndipo Mungu akashuka chini. Because the sea belongs to him. Kwa sababu bahari ni ya kwake. He raised the storm. Akainua mawimbi. Like never before. Haijawahi tokea. And those people. Na wale watu. They prayed to their God. Wakaomba kwa Mungu wao. There was no answer. Hakukuwa na majibu. I tell you as a child of God. Nakwambia wewe kama mtoto wa Mungu. Wherever you go. Popote unakokwenda. It doesn't matter how many demons in hell can rise against you. Haijalishi mapepo kiasi gani kutoka kuzimu yatainuka dhidi yako. When God lies the standard wakati Mungu akiinua kiwango no demon can stop it hakuna pepo kuzuia hiyo because that god is a marvelous god kwa sababu huyo Mungu ni Mungu mkuu one person mtu mmoja just like Elijah kama Elia against 450 prophets of God dhidi ya manabii 450 wa Baali he said you are many akasema ninyi ni wengi you can start mnaweza kuanza choose your balok a uh, uh, anzeni offer sacrifice to your god and and tuani sadaka kwa mungu wenu hallelujah hallelujah the magicians were happy 
Ndipo wale wachao wako furahi. Why were they happy? Kwa nini walikuwa na furaha? Because where they worship Kwa sababu kule wanapoabudu if they worship wakiabudu tu the magician will come and cause fire boom na wale, wale wachao wanakuja wanasababisha moto wow god can bring fire ndio anajua mungu wetu anaweza kaleta moto so even when elijah said let your god bring fire hata elia alivyosema acheni mungu wenu alete moto they were very much sure that their god will bring fire walikuwa na uhakika sana kwamba mungu wao ataleta moto that's why they did not resist ndio maana hawakupinga na Now what caused them not to bring fire? Sasa kile kilichosababisha wasilete moto it was the presence of one man. Ulikuwa ni uwepo wa mtu mmoja. Your presence of Elijah. Uwepo wa They are they are gods. Mungu miungu yao. Those demons. Hayo mapepo. We are watching from afar. Yalikuwa yanatazamia kutoka mbali. Can't come near where I am. Hayo wazi kutokea mahali yupo Mungu. Your presence in this world means a lot. Uwepo wako duniani hapa unamaanisha mengi. Amen. Hawakuweza kufika mahali alipokuwa hapo Elia. We undermine ourselves. Tunajiweka chini wenyewe tunatishusha. The day you are going to know who you are. Siku utakwenda kujua wewe ni nani. You, you be walking like the king. Utakuwa unatembea kama mfalme. Because you come from another king. Kwa sababu unatoka kutoka katika mfalme ule. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. You are not the way you think you are. Wewe hauko vile unawaza ulivyo. Because God calls you priest and king. Kwa sababu Mungu anakuita wewe ku ani na mfalme then you call yourself to be something ndipo wewe unajiita kitu kingine tofauti no 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 hapana 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 where you come from kule unakotoka we walk upright tunatembea wima because we were in the creation with kwa sababu tulikuwa katika umbaji wa Mungu so elijah knew kwa hiyo elia alijua no demon can stand against kuna pepo la kusimama mbele yangu so elijah said elia kasema you can prepare your calf unaweza kuandaa mambo yako na wanzeni kwanza they started calling na ukaanza kuita bad listen to us oh bali tusikie oh bali listen to us oh bali tusikie they sacrificed the blood wakaanza kutoa sadaka za damu wakati katakata it was nothing hakukwepo na chochote then they just said ndio elia akasema what is happening nini kinatendeka until now paka sasa call your god iteni mungu wenu maybe has taken your journey labda amesafiri he will respond to your call hata waitikia they continue to call na wakaanza kumwita wakaendelea hallelujah hallelujah until they failed mpaka wakashindwa and elijah saw that it's time to give sacrifice to god na elia kaona ni wakati wa kutoa sadaka kwa mungu he told you all israel akaita wa Israeli wote Come near to me Joni kwangu hapa karibu yangu These are many At these are many. Hawa ni wengi. Me am alone. Mimi niko peke yangu. But let me prepare here. Hebu acha niandae yangu hapa. He said pour water on the altar. Akasema hebu mwageni maji juu ya ya, ya madhabahu. And he poured water. Na akamwaga maji. He was very sure of the God he worship. Alikuwa na uhakika sana na Mungu aliyemwabudu. Are you sure of the God you worship? Je, una uhakika na Mungu unayemwabudu? That same God of Elijah. Huyu Mungu yule yule Elia is here today. Yuko hapa pa leo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God who answers by fire. Mungu ajibue kwa moto. Oh. Oh. You know what Elijah did? Unajua kile Elia alifanya? No spirit stood against. Hakuna roho ilisimama dhidi yake. One man. Mtu mmoja. Now in conclusion. Sasa katika kumalizia. I was talking about this backslidden prophet. Nilikuwa nikizungumza kuhusu huyu nabii aliyerudi nyuma. The prophet calls him a backslidden prophet. Nabii anamuita nabii aliyerudi nyuma. The prophet Jonah. Nabii Jonah. When God caused the trouble. Wakati Mungu amesababisha shida. 
we can try our own way tunaweza ku, kujaribu njia zetu ya kutatua matatizo outside the word of god nje ya neno la mungu haiwezi kutendeka those people on the boat wale watu pale kwenye merikebu they threw everything in the water wakatupa kila mzigo kila kitu But kwenye maji problem man. was still there lakini shida ilikuwa bado iko pale the owner of the boat was very worried na yule aliyekuwa na miliki miliki wa ile merikebu alikuwa amesikitika sana he went to search the boat akaanza kutafuta he, kule kwenye 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 merikebu man sleeping akakuta mtu amelala when others are in trouble wakati wengine wako katika shida someone is sleeping mtu fulani amelala he said to you akasema wewe how can you be sleeping unawezaje kulala when we have a challenge on top of wakati si tuna shida pale juu where do you come from unatoka wapi what is your name jina lako ni nani what is your tribe na kabila lako ni nani where are you going na unakwenda wapi so many questions at the same time maswali mengi wakati mmoja He had to cut the story short. Aka aka akabidi tu a amalize habari afupishe habari. He said I am a Hebrew running away from God. Mkaza mimi ni Mwebrania ninamkimbia Mungu wa Israeli. Who was the problem? Una nani alikuwa na shida? It was a prophet. Ilikuwa ni nabii huyu. That sheep was in trouble because it carried the prophet. Ile merikebu ilikuwa na shida kwa sababu ilibeba nabii. I can assure you. Naweza nikakuhakikishia. In Lusaka, kule Lusaka, one of the brothers was chased by a Chinese. Ndugu mmoja alifukuzwa na mchina. He worked for a Chinese company. Alifanya kazi kwa kampuni ya mchina. So when I called for prayers, wakati nimeita kwa ajili ya maombi, he came for prayers instead of going for work. Alikuja kwenye maombi baadaye akwenda kufanya kazi akaja kwenye maombi. Then when he went to the following day. Kwa alipenda siku inayofuata. The Chinese chest him to say you like too much hallelujah too much hallelujah. Go, yule mchina akamfukuza akasema wewe unapenda hallelujah nyingi sasa ondoka. And the brother called me. Na ndugu akanipigia simu. I was at the mountain. Na mimi nilikuwa kule mlimani. He said I've been chased because I came for church. Akasema mimi nimefukuzwa kwa sababu nilikuja kanisani. So he has even paid me this money so I've sent that typhoon air to Omani. Na na amenilipa mimi hizi pesa kwa hiyo nimetuma fungu la kumi kwa kwa Airtel kwa hiyo I was at the mountain. Kwa nilikuwa kule mlimani. I said brother no problem. Akasema ndugu hakuna shida. I'm at the mountain I'll find out what go what is the next step from God. Niko huku mlimani nitauliza nita nijue hatua inayofuata baada ya hii. Then I was still now as. Nipo ilipofika kama saa kumi. A voice said as if it is coming from the trees. Sauti ikasema kama tu inatoka kwenye miti. You can drop the mountain go to church there. Unaweza kushuka mlimani nenda kanisani kule. Go and tell the brother in front of the whole church. Nenda kamwambie yule ndugu mbele ya kanisa lote. That he will be restored back to the company. Kwamba utarudisha kwenye ile kampuni. If they don't restore him. Kama hawatamrudisha, then the company will be closed. Ndipo ile kampuni itafungwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I went to church, kwani ipo kwenda kanisani, you know the possession of a believer. Unajua nafasi ya muamini. You just don't know where you are. Hujui tu uko nafasi gani. You don't know who you are. Hujui wewe ni nani. But today you should know. Lakini leo unapaswa ujue that the company you are in kwamba kampuni ulio ulioko ndani yake it is surviving because of you inafaulu kwa sababu yako should they temper against you wa, kama wakikusumbua wewe then they are playing against fire nipo anachezea moto hallelujah hallelujah that's how a child of god is hivyo ndivyo mtoto wa Mungu alivyo and i said it in front of all the church members na nikasema mbele ya washirika wote wa kanisa i said brother you can stand nikasema ndugu unaweza kusimama apostle malasha knows the person i'm talking about mtume malasha anajua mtu anazungumzia he knows about the issue anajua kuhusiana na kesi inayozungumzia i said brother stand nikasema ndugu simama that save the lord hivi asema bwana you are going to be restored back to your working utakwenda kurejeshwa kwenye kazi yako 
If you are not going to be restored, kama hutarejeshwa, one of the company will be closed. Ile kampuni itafungwa ndio namba moja. For that company to survive, ili kampuni iweze kuendelea, they should chase that Chinese back to China. Itabidi wamfukuze huyo mchina arudi China. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After five days, baada ya siku tano, He was called around 20 hours. Akaitwa kama saa mbili usiku. Brother Brother Emmanuel, ndugu Emmanuel, come for work tomorrow. Njo njo kwa ajili ya kazi kesho. He said but he chased me. Akasema lakini alinifukuza. Then another manager said no it's me calling you not that person. Come report for work. Akasema hapana ni mimi nakuita sio yule mtu. Njo Uli, kazini. Then tomorrow he reported for work. Ndipo kesho akaripoti kazini. After reporting then they met with a Chinese. Baada ya kuripoti akakutana yule mchina. Then the Chinese looked at him. Ndipo yule mchina akamwangalia. He shook his head. Akatikiza kichwa chake. He said this hallelujah. Akasema hii hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, that's how he was restored. Hivyo ndivyo alivyorejeshwa. He started working. Akaanza kufanya kazi. Then two weeks down the line. Ndipo wiki mbili kuendelea. He called me to say we are at the airport. Akaniita akasema tuko hapa uwanja wa ndege. All the workers as suspended work. Wafanya kazi wote wameacha wamesimamishwa kazi. Wamesimamisha kazi. They want to escort a Chinese to go back to China. Wanataka wamsindikize mchina arudi China. And every worker went to the airport. Na kila mmoja akaenda kule uwanja wa ndege. And before that Chinese had to board a train. Ka- kabla huyo mchina haja panda ndege. He came to brother Mwasa. Akaja kwa ndugu Mwasa. Let's take a picture. Akasema njoo hebu tupige picha. Then they took a picture. Ndipo akapiga picha. Then he went off he went into a plane. Ndipo akaenda akapanda ile ndege. And he sent that picture to me. Akanitumia ile picha. He said the Chinese has been chased. Akasema yule mchina amefukuzwa leo. You see what your god can do. Unaona? Vile Mungu anaweza Mungu wako anaweza kufanya that's the god i'm talking about Huyo ndiye Mungu anayemzungumzia so those people were holding the prophet kwa, kwa wale watu waliokuwa wanamshikilia yule nabii the prophet was a problem nabii alikuwa ni shida and they said what should we do with you akasema sasa tukufanye tukutendee nini wewe he said throw me into the water akasema nie nitupeni kwenye maji and he was bound hands with legs na akafungwa mikono na miguu and he was thrown into the water na katupa majini it was quiet na ikawa shwari the waves were quiet mawimbi yakatulia and the people started crying on na watu wakaanza kulia a man is dead. Mtu amekufa. A man is dead. Mtu amekufa. Just like you cry when someone dies who is a believer. Kama tu vile unalia wakati mtu fulani muamini amekufa. You cry that is dead. Unakufa kwamba amekufa. Unalia kwamba amekufa lakini anaishi mahali fulani. But that believer is alive somewhere. Lakini huyo muamini anaishi mahali fulani. And those were crying that a man is dead. Na wale walikuwa akilia kwamba ule mtu amekufa. But Jonah was alive somewhere. Lakini Yohana eh, na, lakini Yona alikuwa anaishi mahali fulani. And God prepared a great fish. Na Mungu akaandaa samaki mkubwa. It swallowed the prophet. It kameza yule nabii now listen to this sasa sikia hii the prophet jona yule nabii yona there is no man who was in a critical situation like the prophet jona hakuna mtu alikuwa katika hali ya dharura kama nabii yona you are on the sea uko baharini you are bound legs and hands na umefungwa mikono na miguu not only that you are even swallowed by the great monster sio hivyo tu umemezwa na jitu kubwa is there any hope of surviving je kuna tumaini lolote la kuokoa no, la, ku, la kuishi no, hakuna no. kabisa hakuna Because tumaini are, you are swallowed kwa sababu umemezwa and you are bound na umefungwa you are in the belly of the fish na uko katika tumbo la samaki and the fish was praising god na samaki alikuwa akimsifu mungu today i didn't i i wasn't in trouble to look for food 
Nasema leo sikupata shida kutafuta chakula. My God answered me. Mungu amenijibu. I just saw food coming direct into the mouth. Nikaona chakula kinakuja tu mdomoni. So let me go and rest down because I'm satisfied. Hebu nienda nikae zangu huku chini kwa sababu nimeshiba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The money is surprising God. Ah yule ile jitu likawa linamsifu Mungu. Because it has eaten. Kwa sababu um, limeshiba. Now look at that. Ah, kwa sababu sasa tazama hilo. It has eaten a prophet. Sasa imekula. <laughs> Amekula nabii. Anyone who fights against you. Yote anapigana dhidi yako. Is fighting against God. Anapigana dhidi ya Mungu. Not even in nature. Hata maumbile. Not even in nature can fight against you. Hata maumbile hawezi kupigana dhidi yako. The sea belongs to you. Bahari ni yako. The ocean belongs to you. Bahari kubwa ni yako. No matter how you don't have money. Haijalishi kiasi gani una pesa. The ocean belongs to you. Bahari kubwa ni yako. How many had those five millionaires who were swallowed by a submarine? Wangapi walisikia wale mamilionea watano waliomezwa kwenye ile sa, sa, nyambizi? How, how many had that they were five millionaires who were in a small submarine? Ni wangapi walisikia kwamba kulikopo na wamilionea watano God, walikuwa ndani ya nyambizi ndogo? God bless you for that brothers and sisters. Mungu awabariki ninyi wandugu na wadada. Those people can only the world they had everything. Wale watu wangeweza kumiliki ulimwengu walikuwa na kila kitu. They went to see the Titanic. Walienda kuiona ile meli ya Titanic. But they were lost until today. Wamepotea mpaka leo. It is the same sea. Ni bahari ile ile which the prophet went. Ambao nabii alikuwaepo kule. Now because the prophet was in the sea. Lakini kwa sababu nabii alikuwa ndani ya bahari. He was in the belly of the fish. Alikuwa katika tumbo la samaki. The prophet remembered. Nabii akakumbuka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Solomon Sa, aka, Suleman, when he was dedicating the temple kalu, the prophet remembered the prayer of a natural man Solomon na maombi ya mtu wa kawaida, Suleman, with a natural temple akiwa na hekalu la kawaida who is Solomon Suleman ni nani he got backslid Alirudi nyuma. He died as a backslider. Alikufa kama alirudi nyuma. But Jonah did not look at the backslidden state of Solomon. Lakini Yohana kuangalia hali ya kurudi nyuma ya Sulemani. Jonah could not look at the failures of Solomon. Lakini Yohana kutazama kushindwa kwa Sulemani. Jonah looked to the temple. Yo, Yona alitazama hekalu. And believed the word of a natural man. Akataka amini maombi ya mtu wa kawaida. And he believed that Solomon was a servant of God. Na kaamini Suleman alikuwa mtumishi wa Mungu. Because when Solomon prayed, kwa sababu wakati Suleman alipoomba, he said when your people Israel are in trouble. Akasema wakati watu wako wa Israeli wako katika shida. When they come to look to this temple, watakapokuja na kutazama ile hekalu and pray, na kuomba, hear their prayer. Sikia maombi yao. And the pillar of fire I went around the temple. Na ule nguzo wa moto ikaja ikizunguka lile hekalu. To vindicate the prayer of Solomon. Kuthibitisha maombi ya Suleman. So when Jonah was in trouble. Wakati Yona yuko katika shida. He looked to the temple in Jerusalem. Akatazama hekalu ya Yerusalemu. And he said you heard the prayer of Solomon. Akasema wewe ulisikia maombi ya Suleman. He believed the natural man Solomon. Akaamini maombi ya mtu wa kawaida Suleman. Not the fair years of Solomon. Si kushindwa kwa Suleman. Don't look at the failures of these people. Usiangalie makosa na kushindwa kwa hao watu. Look at the word of God they give you. Tazama lile neno la Mungu analowapatia. Jonah looked to the prayer of Solomon. Kwa sababu Yona alitazama maombi ya Suleman. And he had faith in the prayer of Solomon. Na alikuwa na imani kwenye maombi ya Suleman. And he believed Solomon. Na akamwamini Suleman. And Jesus said. Na Yesu akasema. Greater than Solomon is here now. Ku kuliko Sulemani yuko hapa sasa. If Jonah could hear the prayer of Solomon. Kama Yona angeweza kusikia mao 
Mambo ya Sulemani. How much more that Jesus has come in the form of the prophet of the hour today. Vipi sana Yesu amekuja katika umbo la nabii wa saa leo. He spoken word ministry. Na huduma ya neno lilonenwa. Because greater than Solomon is here now. Kwa sababu mkuu kuliko Sulemani yuko hapa sasa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he played a prayer. Na kaomba maombi. Then the, the monster started moving. Ndipo lile jitu samaki likaanza kutembea. Because it carried a prophet. Kwa sababu lilibeba nabii. Trouble has started now. Sasa shida imeanza sasa. It was in a panic. Sasa ikaa katika wasiwasi. And God was making the work of the enemy to bring glory to him. Na Mungu alikuwa anafanya kazi ya adui imletee utukufu kwake. Satan was happy that the prophet has been swallowed. Shetani alikuwa na furaha kwamba nabii amemezwa. Little did he knew that God is playing the mathematics there. Ni kidogo sana alijua kwamba angejua kwamba Mungu alikuwa anacheza mahesabu yake pale. And the monster went to Nineveh. Na lile jitu samaki likaenda mpaka Ninawi. And remember the people of Nineveh worshiped the same monster. Na unakumbuka watu wa Ninawi waliabudu hilo jitu hilo hilo? You see how God does his mathematics. Unaona jinsi Mungu anafanya mahesabu yake? Those people in Nineveh kuwale watu kule ninawi they couldn't believe Jonah coming as a human being wasingeweza kumwamini Yona akija kama mtu because they were worshiping a monster kwa sababu walikuwa naabudu ile jitu samaki ile and god made the works of the enemy to bring glory to him na mungu akafanya kazi za adui zimletee utukufu he had to use the same monster they are worshiping akatumia lile lile jitu analoliabudu akalitumia the prophet there ikalika mpeleka nabii kule small fish were alive sasa yale masamaki madogo walikuwa nakimbia mbali. People gathered by the sea. That's what the prophet is saying. Na watu walikusanyika karibu na bahari, hivyo ndivyo nabii anasema. They knew that their God now is about to manifest now. Wakajua sasa Mungu wao anakaribu kudhihirika sasa. Everyone was in a state of worshiping. Kila mmoja alikuwa katika hali ya kuabudu. Because the monsters appeared now. Sasa lile jicho linatokea sasa. Just as it opened its mouth. Lilipofungua tu mdomo wake. Then God brought the the prophet out of the tongue of the monster. Nipo Mungu akamtoa nabii kutoka mdomoni mwa lile jitu. And the first word he said in repent. Neno la kwanza lilosema tubuni au muangamie. And the one in the had to fall down. Nipo ninao yote ikadondoka chini. They say they were God. Ikasema Mungu wetu. As if in given as a man ametupatia mtu to talk to us about repentance kutuambia sisi kuhusu kutubu then that sin is so serious nipo inaonyesha hili jambo ni makini maalum sana they took jonah to the king wakampeleka yona kwa mfalme why kwa nini he came through a monster Al- kuja kupitia ili jitu samaki alikuja kupitia huyu Mungu wao kama angeenda mwenyewe watu wasingemwamini but god used the monster lakini Mungu akatumia ili jitu ili ilifungua mdomo wake na nabii atoke nje and speak the word of god na neno na la Mungu and 40 days was given na siku 40 zikatolewa oni ni repented Oh ninao yote tubuni and ilitubu Jesus says greater than Jonah is here now. Na Yesu akasema mkuu kuliko Yona yuko hapa. How much more do we need to repent? Di, ki, ni kubwa jinsi gani tunahitaji sisi kutubu? How much more do we need to be healed? Muhimu jinsi gani sisi tunahitaji kuponywa? When Jesus is alive greater than Solomon and Jonah. Wakati Yesu anaishi mkuu kuliko Sulemani na Yona. Whatever situation you may have. Haijalishi hali yote uliona I'm sure you have seen that our God is more greater than anyone. Na kika mmeona Mungu wetu ni mkubwa kuliko yeye. Just surrender yourself. Jisalimisha tu mwenyewe. The prophet says, Nabii anasema, God shall hear every sincere prayer. Mungu atasikia mao kila maombi manyoofu. If you are sick, kama unaumwa no matter situation you have hajalishi hali ulionayo and you stand to challenge god here na unasimama kumpa mungu changamoto hapa if god looks at your face kama mungu akitazama imani yako he grant you today atakukimbilia wewe ah, may, may we stand may god add his blessing to the leading of them atakupa leo hebu tusimame hebu tusimame give us a song as we go into prayer
Tupatia wimbo tunapoelekea kwenye maombi. That same God. Mungu huyo huyo. Is here this hour. Yuko hapa saa hii. What he did to the Jews. Vila alivyofanyia Wayahudi. He will do it today. Atafanya leo. What you want? Kila unachotaka. Come and meet him here. Njoo ukutane naye hapa. Give us a song. Tupe wimbo.